today in the closet I'm here with Sarah Potterton from Sarah Star and we're in um, pret a directly opposite um, Vogue's headquarters, British headquarters. Indeed we are. Sarah has a fashion event in London called Sarah Star and I'd like to talk to you about it. Yeah, okay. So how did you, what prompted you to start it? Well, first of all, I should say it's it's the the event is actually hosted on Airbnb's website, um, and it's an experience. So it's a fashion experience, and it's called Sustainable Style with Sarah. Um, so what prompted me uh, to start it was because I'm a stylist, but I'm also a communications consultant. So I wanted to marry the two into providing a fashion experience which said more about which said less about my styling expertise I suppose and and, and something about my thoughts and ideas around fashion um, and I've always felt quite passionately about you know reusing re sustainable fashion and I thought well what can I do that sort of encompasses that and, and, is a, and is a fun and engaging experience for people. Um, so I came up with this concept. Um, I thought about an area of London that I really love, one of my most, the, the first place I came to in London actually, which is Chelsea, um, and I was just not sideways by it. I came here from Ireland, I grew up on a farm, I went to Chelsea, the King's Road, and I thought, hey, what, you know, it was, <laughs> it was all fashion and music and it was fabulous. Um, and I thought, well, hold on, what's Chelsea got? And I thought, it's got this amazing, rich British fashion history, because that's really where it all kicked off in the 60s. Um, you have Mary Quant opening her first boutique in 1955 called Bazaar, and, and, and it just goes from there, really. It became a real hub for fashion. And I thought, well, okay, what else have we got in Chelsea? And, um, and I realized that all my favorite charity shops, and I, I, you have the same in New Zealand, I think, are in Chelsea because they are the best. Really? Uh, I mean, you wouldn't think that there's a market for charity shops. Well, indeed, you wouldn't, but what the, the great advantage that they have there is that because it's a very wealthy area, I mean, and I would say that there are other wealthy areas in London as well that, that one can find these shops, but people donate really, really great stuff Brilliant. yeah so um, and and because I suppose people sort of know that they gravitate towards that area to to go and search for stuff so I thought I know I'll do um, a walking a kind of a walking experience a walking tour if you like around that area and so that's what I do so I take a group of up to four to six people um, I tell them all about the British fashion history of the area and then I take them to the shops, we have a coffee, we get to know each other a little bit, and they get to know each other, importantly. Um, and, and then we start our walking. And we, well, I've, done, I've done this experience now, in the wind, the rain, the snow, the hail, the blazing sunshine. <laughs> I've, I've done it about 70 times. Um, some people book for groups, some mothers and daughters come, um, best friends come. Um, it, it is a really fun thing to do. We walk, so we walk around to the charity shops, I pull out, um, I educate people a little bit too, obviously, it, um, about British fashion, about international fashion. So I'll pull out the designers, I'll show them, I'll tell them a bit about those designers. Um, being London, we will get quite a lot of British designers, so we'll get quite a lot of Templey in there, we might get some Stella McCartney, um, but we'll get international as well. So I've, I've found, for example, a fabulous Marc Jacobs jacket myself, I'm not supposed to shop, but you know, um, and that was, you know, so you, you all kinds of designers. So I tell them, and I, and then I pull things out for people that I think might, might suit them. Yes. So it's, it, it's not a one-to-one -one styling experience, but it is a sort of an encompasses that. There's a bit of that in there. Um, so in the group dynamic, do you find that people assist each other and go, oh, that looks really great on you, or no, don't be there? Yeah, sometimes they do, actually. Um, I get very different uh, groups. I get very different people. Sometimes people come and they, and they literally, um, 
stick right by me. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> as, I'm, as I'm going down the rails, they, they, they won't look on their own. They, they feel, well, some people feel in, a little inhibited, I guess, by fashion. They, they don't know necessarily have a great idea of what suits them. They don't really know what they're looking for. So some people will, will stick pretty close by. And then I have to encourage them to just go and hunt, you know, see, just see what feels right. Just see what you, you can find that and feels good. And do they good. come out of each shell a little bit? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I break them down. I break them down, burn them down. I know, <laughs> I, in the nicest possible way. But I, but, um, you know, I've had people that haven't spoken English. Um, I famously, I had um, uh, a Chinese mother and daughter. And the daughter, um, was an astrophysicist. Oh my goodness. And I'd never met an astrophysicist, so I was really quite impressed by that. And um, her mother spoke no English at all. And so I just turned around to her mum and I said, You're a daughter, you know, she's just a big brain, you know, like this. And she just totally got it, you know, we were laughing. And so, you know, there's there's ways to communicate. And I guess my, my experience as a communications consultant helps all that. Uh, helps facilitate those groups. Um, it, it's kind of a performance in a way. It's right. kind of a performance. And why yeah. the sustainability angle for you? For me, I think we've gone a bit crazy uh, with fast fashion, for want of a different term. Um, it's so easy to keep buying and consuming and buying and buying. We've lost sight, I think, of I think it I think it distracts from other more important things in life. Genuinely, I think consumerism is a big sort of cloak that sort of hides a lot of other things we possibly should be thinking about, like our spirituality, for example, <laughs> or I don't know, more important world events, more important things that are going on. And in a way, it's a sort of a it's kind of a drug. It's kind yeah, of an addiction. Yeah. Um, the quick hit. Yeah, it's a quick hit. Um, I suppose I feel conflicted because I love fashion myself. I studied fashion. I studied tailoring. I have a diploma in tailoring. I've worked for uh, British designers. I have my own label briefly. I love fashion. I absolutely love it. Um, but I felt maybe I can do some small thing that really communicates how I feel this has really gone a bit too far. Right. You know, yeah. it's not it's it's not a case of either or. <clears throat> Ideally, yes, one would be sustainable and do everything sustainably. But that's not always possible. <laughs> so I my my attitude is very much do what you can. And I would rather go find a quality design piece in a charity shop to five items in a high street store like I don't know, Primark or Zara or... I love Zara as much as the next person, but I would rather have quality, always. Yes. Um, and, it's, and it's also for me about thinking about what's in your wardrobe as a stylist. I would encourage um, my clients to, let's look at your wardrobe, actually. Let's see, maybe you've got other things that are going to work with other pieces. You know, maybe you can switch, <coughs> switch things up a little bit. Um, so it's about thinking about it differently. It's about thinking about your approach to what you wear um, a little bit differently. Mm. Um, and, and, and just my experience, certainly, is just a way of, of doing that. Yeah. And, and the research shows that by extending the life of a garment and re-wearing it, you can say you know, the em environmental impacts of about 30, up to about 30%. So absolutely, it's perfect for to do. Yeah. So if people wanted to find you, how do they find you? So they would go onto Airbnb. Um, that's a little shout out for Airbnb there. Um, <laughs> and they would look at experiences in London, and they would go into. I think I'm in the entertainment section. Oh really? Yeah, I think I'm in the, <laughs> I'm in the entertainment section, and um, it's called Sustainable Style with Sarah. Um, and you'll see there, and you can book. I have various dates. Mostly, I, I run it on the weekends. Um, but sometimes, I if, if somebody has a group, um, I can accommodate them during the week. Brilliant. So, yeah. So, if you're in London and want to, want to hunt out the best in vintage or second-hand clothing, designer clothing, designer clothing, mm, track yeah. down Sarah.